Hi everyone, welcome to our session today uh, titled Sakai and Apache Ignite. It's going to be presented by Earl Neitzel from Longsite. Uh, just some housekeeping, please uh, leave yourself muted and your cameras turned off during the presentation. Although if you would like to ask a question, uh, please wait until the QA portion at the end of the presentation, or you can use the shared notes section at the top left corner there uh, above the users list, and you can ask your presenter questions there, and then we'll take questions in the second half of the presentation. Uh, please feel free to use the chat box, but only for chat, um, and try to keep the questions into the uh, shared notes area. If you have any tech questions, please feel free to direct message me. You can do that by clicking on my name. My name is Sean F. and moderator after it in the users list. And with that, I will turn it over to Earl. Thank you, Sean. And uh, welcome everyone to uh, Sakai meets uh, Apache Ignite. So Apache Ignite is an Apache project and Sakai is going to be, is using it in Sakai 21. Uh, so let's uh, see, up oh, here we go, okay. So, um, you know, Apache Ignite is kind of, a, it's a big piece of software and it does a lot of things. Um, as can be seen by this slide. Um, the area that Sakai's current use, Sakai 21 that is, its current use is in the multi-tier storage area, right? So basically, um, uh, you know, we're using it to uh, replace the caches that are in Sakai right now. Um, could we, you know, in the future, there might be uh, many more things that we use from Ignite, but right now what we're interested in is in, is in the caching features um, as we're sort of uh, transitioning away from um, EH cache um, onto Ignite. And uh, uh, previously, previously in Sakai 20 and before, EH cache managed all of the Sakai caching. And... Uh, in the future, that will all be replaced by Ignite. Uh, so uh, I'm going to try to get into a quick, uh, uh, I'm going to go over the configuration real quick and then try to go into and show a demo real quick about why this feature is important. All right. So uh, so my, uh, I have, a, the demo is set up. So I have two Tomcats. I have Tomcat A, Tomcat B. And I have a server ID that represents node A and one that represents node B for the two Tom, you know, for each Tomcat. These are the URLs that I'm using for this local setup. I've uh, set up uh, an Ignite port uh, corresponding again to each node, 59100, 59200. And what I've done is um, this next set of Ignite configuration is common to the rest of, uh, to both nodes, meaning both nodes have the same exact config right here, right? Um, there is more in configuration um, in this uh, readme real quick. Uh, I will uh, shoot straight over to that real quick. Um, uh, you can use that link to get to this readme. Uh, and and this basically goes into a uh, a big um, kind of uh, you know explanation of you know configuring uh, configuring a night um, and also some of the um, you know some more detail about what what you might want to configure. Uh, okay, so uh, so that's the configuration between these two nodes. Um, and, and now, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Um, and then uh, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to uh, demo the Ignite Visor command line tool, okay? And so in order to demo, um, in order to demo that, um, there's this config file that we'll get, cre that we create. And it's uh, the main thing in here is, whoops, is that it's uh, the addresses section has both addresses um, for the two nodes that are in our um, in our cluster. So if I go back, you'll see here ignite addresses. These exact same. These two. This is in a. You know. This is a. Um, this is a. Uh, you know, there's two entries here. Um, 59101, 201, and then in the uh, visor command configuration, 
um, they're they're identical. Okay, and then I'll I'll go over this here in a sec too once we get to that. So let me go ahead and jump into the demo because this is going to show you guys exactly um, why um, um, why this is important. You know why why move to ignite and a distributed cache. Um, so uh, let me. Uh, so here, what I have, just real quick, um, I have uh, two com two Comcats running. Um, this in this single console, you're looking at both Catalina outlogs. I've colored each log, so I believe Node Eight is blue, and Node B is green. So anytime you start seeing this log move, um, it should be colored accordingly to the node that is uh, outputting data. And so I've so got. Are you able to just bump that font size up just a tad there? Uh, yes, I could try doing that. Yep. Is that a little better? Yeah, thank you. Yep. Okay. Just if you want us looking at particular lines. Yeah. Yeah, there's not going to be a whole lot to look at, but I, I will I will dial in when there is something. Um, so. Um, Actually, uh, sorry, let me just re resize that correctly. And then I want to bring up, I'm going to bring up two screens, uh, probably more than two screens, but here. Um, so what I want to show you real quick is that uh, this is uh, this is my this is my Tomcat. Um, this side over here, I have a professor um, that is. Uh, um that is signed in and my professor here is thurman gaylord and he has created one assignment we're going to go ahead and create another assignment we're going to call it week two okay so and actually um i'm gonna want this like this so you guys can at least see the week i apologize for all the screen switching it's gonna be crazy uh so week two and you know whatever and we're gonna send some grades of course why not grades are important we're gonna post it and as you can see on note a it's blue you know we get we get a bunch of stuff happening right okay so cool um also uh i can show real quick i uh refresh this here you can see here on note a and node b I got my two servers and I got some sessions, right? One on each. And you can kind of see that my admin session, this is this one that I'm in, and this is my instructor. So this is Gaylord over here. Or actually, I think it's the opposite. Uh, yep, that's right, yep. So this one's the blue one. And so, and I got a student logged in over here, right? So typically what we, what we usually see, um, what the problem that this is going to fix is where um you know you're in the the professors you know in a classroom and they're kind of doing this where he puts the assignment in the classroom puts it you know says i've created this assignment now i want all the students to go you know uh you know to this assignment <clears throat> you know and i want you to complete this assignment in the next you know 15 20 minutes whatever it is right and so um, at this point, you know, all the students kind of log into Sakai, they get, they, they get joined in and then, um, and this is my student, this is my student UI right here. And so, um, uh, once they create the, uh, so, uh, all the students log in, they go and they say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get in here. Look, oh, there's my week two assignment, right? Okay. I'm going to, you know, and the instructor says, go ahead and start it and, you know, work on it. And so the student works, uh, you know, diligently on this and, you know, you got, and then um, he wants all the students to, you know, submit, right? Submit their assignment, right? So, okay, students submitting assignment. And then what happens is, student submits assignment. And what happens is, um, because some students, are on are on different nodes in a cluster. This is uh, specific to a clustered Sakai environment. So if you have one single Sakai environment, um, you really won't experience this. But in a multi in a clustered situation, you're going to see where um, a student submitted from a different node, 
and then the instructor says, okay, um, and our student over here is uh, Sigrid, and um, you know, and then the and then the uh, the professor comes over here and is looking for you know updates, right? And and he goes and Sigrid says, I've submitted, but the instructor says, no, you haven't. And uh, and it comes back and says, but Sigrid says, yes, I did. And the instructor says, no, you don't. I don't see it here. I don't see anything new coming in, right? Um, now, of course, if I refresh this, this is going to work. So, uh, but in the end here, what, what happened is, is that um, the, the, so the uh, Sakai 20 and before, the caches are individual to each node. So node A, node B in a Sakai 20 environment, their caches are different. And they don't talk to each other. Node A doesn't really talk to node B. And, um, you know, when, cat, when things in the cache change, um, we rely on TTLs a lot. There are some caches that are in validation, but there's not a lot, right? And so um, usually what happens in this situation is uh, the TTL has to expire, is what on the cache in order for it to get refreshed on that particular node. And when that happens, then all of a sudden, oh, there's Sigrid submission and it's now able to be seen, right? But in our case, you know, we don't need to wait for a TTL because if I just click resubmit here, boom, you're going to see Sigrid submission right away. And here it is, right? And this is, um, uh, again, in Sakai 20, this is a common problem. And people complain about this quite frequently that people do things and they don't see it right away. And it's, and it's because of the nodes having these different caches. And in this case, because Ignite is a distributed cache, it's a single cache, it's just distributed amongst all nodes, it means that each node um, has updated information in the cache in milliseconds, milliseconds, right? So that's that's the that's the kind of the, the 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 beauty here is that no more waiting, right? That's what I'm saying. No more waiting. Everybody can, uh, um, you know, you will see all the changes from all the nodes to the cache um, instantly. Basically, is is what we're going to see here. So there will be no more waiting. There will be no more of this you know, this sort of, uh, you know, waiting for the other nodes to catch up, if you will, because that's what it seems like. So just to show you that this is actually, you know, um, okay, so I did have my log here and uh, let's see what I, um, so what I want to do is I'm going to go into the visor command real quick, so I'm going to run out of time. So, and I want to get to questions. So, uh, but what I wanted to show you here by the colored was, as you could see, um, the queries that are coming through, how they're how they're using the distributed cache. But we'll also see that through the visor command. So, what I've got over here is, I've got, and I'm going to increase this because I know this is hard to see. That bigger. Okay. So, uh, so what we have here is a uh, um, this is ignite I just downloaded it from ignite's website one key thing is you need to use the exact same version of night on all Sakai nodes and 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 using this as well so I just downloaded ignite unzipped it into this ignite folder and what I have and I go into the config and uh, you set up um, a configuration there's a bunch of them in there already you just gotta it's actually pretty simple all you got to do is set up this one thing, and lo and behold, what does it have? It literally just has these two lines that you need to add, which map to your cluster. This goes back to the, um, the slide where I, I put that up there. So then, uh, once we have that, we basically run this visor command. It's called ignite visor command. And we're going to get into this, <clears throat> and then uh, we get, con uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, there's a command called open to open a configuration. This is actually going to show you all the configurations that it knows about. In our case, in my case, I've configured number 10. So I'm going to use that. Now what it's actually doing is it's actually communicating and connecting to that cluster. 
okay? And in that cluster, I'm gonna do, there's a couple of commands, some useful commands it prints right here, and I'm gonna do top for topology. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna see we've got a node A and a node B, right? Beautiful, right? And it kinda, um, it'll give you, you can get more de detailed information too um, about each node. So you can type in like node and, uh, and it's interactive too. So like you can, you know, here I'm gonna pick node B. Yeah, why not? Show me some detailed statistics. <clears throat> and as you can kind of see, it's gonna, you know, it just prints out a lot of, you know, a lot of information, right? Um, it even, but one of the areas that it prints out is this data region metrics. And notice we have a hibernate L2 region and a spring region. The hibernate region is obviously where all the hibernate uh, level two, <clears throat> excuse me, all the L2 caching is happening in there. And the spring region is going to be for code caches. Um, so there's a couple of commands that we, we can uh, we can do. Uh, we can uh, also see, let's take a look at all our caches. And I, um, it's kind of hard to see here, but um, <clears throat> you can see that here's a, let me do a, uh, let me do a cache that is just like uh, a single one. Dash C equals at C7. What we're going to get here is a assignment submission cache, right? And <clears throat> we show it shows us the mode that it's in, replicated. All the caches are replicated. Uh, uh, we can see how many entries are in this cache. Um, one, uh, and we can also see sort of the hits, misses. There is more information on this. I don't know that I can get over scroll with this size screen to scroll over and see it, but there's there's uh, also just a few more st stats over there. But <clears throat> so we can uh, we can query the cache. Um, we can get even detailed statistics on the cache if we wanted to, right? Um, the other thing that you might want to do is let's say, um, uh, I don't know, let's say someone goes in and makes a change to the database without letting Hibernate know, right? So meaning meaning someone logs in, you know, signs into MySQL, goes and, you know, executes a query. And, you know, of course, Hibernate's not going to know that, like, maybe I updated a submission or something like that. And that if that submission is cached, um, you know, you've changed it in the database, but Hibernate doesn't know that you changed it, right? So you may want to clear a cache, right? So one of the things I might do, so one of the things someone might want to do with this utility is be able to say, okay, I want to take that C7 cache and I want to just go ahead and I want to just clear it. I want to re, you know, I just want to blow it away. And as you can see, the cache size before was 200 and now it's zero. And essentially now, if I were to hop back over to here and I go back to here, and if I were to just reload this, um, you'll see that it, it queried, it, it went ahead and sent a query um, to get, uh, the next piece of data. So I'm gonna hop back over to the presentation real quick. Um, and what I would like to, uh, so that's the presentation. That's that's the problem that we're solving here with this distributed caching. But what could Ignite do for us in the future? Um, well, we know we're gonna be replacing EH cache. We're definitely gonna be looking at doing clustered web sessions, which means, uh, you know, Sakai's, uh, uh, sessions will be clustered, meaning so like if a node, if uh, you know a node goes down for some reason, or you get it gets taken offline because uh, maybe it's under you know maintenance or whatever, all the sessions that were on that node will actually be reconstituted on another node, and uh, and the user just picks up right where they were, meaning they don't even notice any interruption. So that's that's what that's what uh, distributed caching will will allow us to start doing. Um, 
we'll also have um, a new memory tool. So uh, this particular memory tool, oops, wrong screen. Where was Safari? Is my Safari? This one here. This uh, memory, sorry, this memory tool over here, which shows us all these like, I know it's real small, but this is just the memory tool. This will be replaced with an Ignite friendly version so that instead of using that uh, console, you can come over here, see the caches, see their stats, and like reset them through a UI versus uh, through a console. So that's common. Uh, back to the presentation. Uh, where was it? Here, sorry. Um, we will do, um, um, we could, uh, again, this is maybe part of intelligent session management. Maybe somebody wants to, uh, you know, uh, maybe someone might have sessions like, uh, you know, maybe servers in different part of the country and they want to, you know, uh, do say, listen, sessions, you know, from the West Coast should be on the West Coast server, stuff like that. Be able to do stuff like that or we could do stuff like that. Um, we're likely going to replace inner cluster communications like cluster event tracking will go away because it won't be needed no more. Um, we'll also, uh, but there's also some things that we like, sky, you know, pie in the sky kind of things we could look at like machine learning. Cause now Apache Ignite, we, we have all these other things at our disposal, uh, data streaming. Like maybe what we want to do is uh, maybe an institution wants to uh, see all the events in Sakai and put them onto like a data stream and see and get that. That will be possible with Ignite as well. Um, Ignite even because it's own its own SQL, uh, it does you know it has its own SQL. It could even become the out of the box database for Sakai maybe in the future, and even maybe multi tenancy down the road. So with that, I want to open it up to questions. I hope I didn't, uh, hope I uh, left enough time for questions. And let's uh, see what people are interested in knowing about Ignite and Sakai. Thanks, Harold. I'm really excited about the promises of that single shared cache and, and resolving a lot of our, our quirky caching issues that we have now and, and some of these future uh, features. Yeah, so now we have some time. We've got about seven minutes left uh, in our session today for uh, some Q&A with the presenter. So feel free uh, to uh, rate your questions in the chat. We've already got one coming in from our watch party. How hard is, how hard is it uh, the memory tool changes? How hard is the memory tool changes? Sorry. So this is the memory, to, uh, like the, the tool to do, um, um, to view, uh, you know, view the status of the memory. Um, that tool, um, so so Ignite has its own sort of proprietary, well, not proprietary, it has its own tool, um, but uh, it requires, it's, uh, it's got a lot of uh, setup with it and it's built in Jetty. And, uh, I, you know, so we have to do some looking to see if we can actually get that into our Tomcat potentially, or at least pieces of it. We just have to, there's a, there's a lot of looking that has to be done there. It could be that we just end up using, you know, maybe our own homegrown version of it. Um, I'm not sure yet. There's a, there's a lot of uh, investigation to do there. But they do have a tool. And, and in theory, if somebody, you know, um, they could install that tool locally and, and use that, and, you know, and configure that. But I would like to do like what they're suggesting there at the lake. Um, just be able to put something in Sakai that uh, kind of covers the, uh, you know, the, the generic needs like resetting caches and things like that, which is a t sometimes a common thing to be doing. Yep, exactly. Great, thanks Watch Party. And thanks Earl. Uh, we've got another question coming in in the shared notes section. Just give him a few minutes here to finish his thought. So far it says, 
is the norm to install an instance of Ignite on each Tomcat node in a cluster, i.e. Does, does Ignite require its own server to host it? So that's a great question. And the answer is, I think, all of that, um, or it can be all of that. So by default, um, the way that we, um, uh, out of the box, Ignite is distributed with Sakai. So each node uh, will have an Ignite instance that it runs. However, <clears throat> we can configure um, Sakai instances to be client nodes, which means they're not server nodes, which means they, uh, um, uh, they will always be using um, another node or Ignite instance to, you know, to, to, you know, as it's a cache manager. So in that sense, so, and also you can also install Ignite, like um, just download it and run it as a simple process, uh, much the way you can do with Elasticsearch, very similar, exactly. And you can actually have that single instance, like Ignite process, just participate in, in the actual cluster if you wanted it to. So for example, say I have a, an eight, an eight node cluster of Sakai. And maybe what I do is I set up a separate Ignite instance so that there's a ninth node, but it's just Ignite all by itself. <clears throat> and that, but I have it join the cluster. <clears throat> Say you're gonna shut down all of your Sakai nodes. Well, it, because you have the standalone Ignite instance participating, all of the caches are gonna be, you know, on that node as well. Right. And so when you go to start up your Ignite, your or sorry, your Sakai nodes again, they will all rejoin that cluster and all the caches are already warm. Right. Because you didn't shut down that other that single Ignite node. Um, and so your caches, all your caches are warm because they're 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 populated. It would only be if you shut down every single like, Sakai node that your caches are actually um, you know, sort of at that point deleted, right? Because there's no, there's no, you know, so if you were to shut down everything, then, you know, your caches are gone. So you, there's many ways to configure this. You can configure in, in multiple ways. Great. Thanks, Earl. Yeah, it sounds like there's different options for us. Um, does anybody else have any questions for Earl at this time? Yeah, anything anybody wants to see or wants to know? I, I will just mention then if nobody has anything, like in 21.1, there's been a number of issues that we've addressed um, around performance. Um, it was, we ended up finding out um, that uh, uh, all of the, the default, uh, the default con uh, concurrent mode is pessimistic. Uh, in Ignite, we've now changed that to match Sakai's optimistic with uh, read committed, um, and the and we moved the caches to be full async, which means you know they'll update each other more, you know, um, you know, uh, without actually waiting. Basically, it'll be less waiting, and that there was an, a huge uh, there was a huge performance improvement when we made those changes. So nice. any, anybody that was using 21.0's version, uh, and also in 21.1, I think we're now using Ignite 2.9.1, where in 21.0, it was Ignite 2.8.0 or 2.8.1. Thanks. We have one more question coming in. we got about 30 seconds left. So uh, it was, how soon for clustered web services in a future version of 21 or in 22 or beyond? So what would your estimate be in about 15 seconds? <laughs> clustered web services. Uh, that's a different uh, animal altogether. Um, or I don't know if they meant clustered web sessions, not services. Sorry, sessions. I read it wrong. Yeah, clustered oh, web I'm sessions. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, good. Yeah, pardon me. So, so, so I have a plan of uh, that I split up into three parts. I, you know, phase one, two, and three. Phase one was to do. Uh, the hibernate stuff, which is what what is done in 21 now. So phase one is done. Phase two, I plan to do the EH cache removal, complete removal of EH cache, 
and replace all the caches uh, that are using EHCache with, you know, an Ignite version. Um, that is also, um, so that'll be P2. And I believe I'll be doing the memory tool, the updates to the memory tool is part of P2 as well. Once P2 is done, then we move on to sort of the, uh, the web session piece, which is P3, which I've labeled for P3. So, so it'll probably be a little bit further out then. Sorry, I have to kind of cut you off. We're, we're at time, but that sure. would probably be around 22 or beyond. Yeah, I'm not sure when all that will be. Could be. I don't know. Just It just depends on how much time. <laughs> <laughs> How much time? Uh, how much time I get <laughs> to work on? Well, thank you, Earl, for your presenting today and for all the work that you're doing with this Ignite project. Uh, really appreciate that, and thank you everybody for attending. The recording will be available after the conference on the Pareto channel, um, and we can keep this conversation going in the discussion on the Trisakai site for this session. So, if you have further questions, feel free to to uh, message Earl there or directly. So, But I want to thank everyone for attending. And uh, we have a few minutes now before our next round starts in about three minutes uh, for our next and last final lightning talks of the conference. So hope to see you then. Thanks, everybody, for attending.